so there's been a few books in my life that have really had a big impact and come at the right time, kind of delivered the goods that I needed at that time to help me on my path. The one I've previously spoken about a lot is The Wake, It's Your Turn by Dr. Angelo Delulo. That book came and had a huge role in helping me to awaken and navigate life uh, just when I needed it. Since then, I haven't read a lot of books cover to cover, a lot of spiritual books. But I was at the bookstore the other day and I was browsing through the spiritual book section and I'd heard of Michael Singer's work before. I've had this book, The Untethered Soul, recommended to me multiple times, actually, from a lot of uh, people that I know that have told me that it's a really good book. But for me, the funny thing is with books and spiritual books in particular, I don't read something unless I deeply, like, I don't know, I just feel deeply pulled to. So I, I was curious about his work. I kind of paged through some of his books and then I saw this one, The Surrender Experiment. By Michael Singer and I read the synopsis on the back and it kind of details a little bit about his actual personal life what a interesting life it is uh, the guy started some incredibly big businesses and became like a successful CEO of a tech company and then had to run in with the FBI and all of that and I was like wow I had no idea about all of this aspects of his life I just knew that he'd written a um a good spiritual book that people had recommended. So I bought the book and I read it cover to cover uh, quite quickly, which I haven't d done with a book in a long time. I often just page through bits and pieces here and there. And this book just absolutely gripped me. Yeah, I wanted to just kind of share the key message from the book that was so transformative for me because it gripped me because it was a fascinating book about his life story. But it really gripped me because it was just this deep, it's just layered with transmission from life. The book itself was an invitation for me to live more and more in surrender and letting go, right? And I've had this orientation for a while, but it came at a great time where there was a lot of chaos uh, unfolding in my life over the last few months, a lot of reshifting you know life forcing me to let go here putting the rug here a lot of intense stuff passing through the system uh, inviting me to surrender and then challenging the parts of myself that were getting caught up in control again and then this book was just michael's way of, of living life was a great reminder that things work out perfectly when you trust and surrender but the key is to surrender from a place of opening up to life, right? One of the, 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 the beautiful things that kind of kept on popping up in this book for me was Michael's kind of willingness to serve whatever came in front of him wholeheartedly, even when there was mental resistance playing out in the mind, right? That's a beautiful thing. Mental resistance is still there. It still plays out, but it's the reminder to surrender. It's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with, I mean, there's nothing wrong with resistance. I mean, resistance is the root of all our problems because we're resisting life. But when resistance appears in your experience, it can be the guide that, oh, I need to surrender to something. Yeah. Right. And I noticed that there was too much planning going on in my life. I was like, I don't want to do this. I want to do that. I don't want to do this. I, I want to do that. And then, just reading this book and kind of Michael's story, it was like, just let go, right? And I knew that, but it was a reminder. It was an inspiration as well, an invitation to live more from that space and to live more from the space of being willing to serve whatever came in front of me and trust your intuition, right? This doesn't mean that you, it's not the same as people pleasing. For me, it's still a lot about like doing what I want with my energy, but it's like things fall into place, right? Life takes care of you. This, the first time I started to live like this was after listening to Angelo Deludo, a lot of his talks. And, you know, he said, when you make awakening to truth, awakening 
awakening, whatever, awakening to the deepest parts of yourself, your main priority, life takes care of you, right? Life, the universe rearranges itself to allow this to happen. What this doesn't mean is it doesn't mean that everything plays out according to your wishes. It might play out to trigger the deepest resistance patterns in yourself right so the worst possible things that your mind could imagine might happen in your life your health could go to shit your relationship could go to shit your job could go to shit but that is a powerful catalyst in itself that's a powerful portal to releasing what you want to release right if you really want to wake up if you really want to go deep then you have to be willing to let it all go and that was one of the, at some point in the book, I loved it. Michael um, mentioned how he was finding himself in these uh, situations that were triggering resistance and he would surrender. On the other side, it was always perfection where it was like, wow, that exactly needed to happen. And it was like each life challenge was an opportunity to let go of more of himself. And that is so key because I feel like we're often, when we think of what's the opportunity here, right? It's just, it's often the opportunity is looked at through the lens of something for the self. What am I going to gain out of this, right? What is this relationship going to give me? What is this, whatever, what is this going to, how is this going to serve me? But if you look at everything through the lens as this is an opportunity for life to dissolve me, right? And maybe you don't want that <laughs> if you're not interested in awakening. But if you're aware of dissatisfaction in your life, if you're aware of resistance in your life, if you're aware of suffering in your life, then you are aware that it is the mental self, the small separate resistant self that thinks that life should do this and life should do that and that person should do this and this shouldn't happen and blah, 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 blah. That's what creates all your suffering. So anything that puts you in places where you're forced to let go of that is one of the greatest gifts you can ever get from the universe so yeah i mean i think reading somebody's personal story of how they navigate navigated life after awakening is a it's powerful right because you can read about how you should surrender but it's quite cool to see the practicalities of it like this was for me i don't know of any other book that i've read that was like a biography of uh this is how this awakened person kind of lived their life. It was, th this was, this was rare for me and I found it fascinating and it, it was helpful for me as well being in this kind of, you know, place where you're living in the unknown, you're living in trust and surrender, but things are still getting triggered, right? Like things are, uh, deep patterns are being exposed. And then with that, it's like a lot of, uh, you know, it's like opening a box and then inside that box is all of your shit and you think that all your shit is gone and then some life circumstances happens and then you're like, oh my gosh, there's all the control shit again. And yeah, for me, this book just came at exactly the right time. So I highly recommend it to everybody. It's, for, it was, for me, it was like profound and I can just, the transmission is, is powerful because now... I can just feel that like it's just the natural mode of being again. That this is why I love the book because it was like, it resonated strongly with how I was living my life, but not entirely right. When challenges come up, then we get pulled into control gets tempting again. Not wanting to know gets tempting again. I realized like I was wanting to know how are things going to play out. Right. And it's fine. Follow that and then see how you struggle. This is what I did. And then this was like, no, 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 come back. You don't need to control anything. And uh, and it has worked out for me. Like, that's the beautiful thing is do it as an experiment. This is the cool thing. The surrender experiment. It was Michael Singer's experiment of what happens if I choose to surrender to life and not try to control it. And then what happened was pretty remarkable, right? He went on this crazy wild journey and all this cool shit happened. <laughs> But it wasn't coming from a place of ego of I want to make this happen. What really resonated is he just wanted to sit in the woods and meditate and be in silence. And that was a great reminder for me as well. It's like I got kind of sucked into being busy again. And then alongside with that, I was like 
kind of getting a bit confused on like, what am I doing with my life? And then it was like, no, no, just come back to like, what's most important to you. And for me, that's just like deep meditation, kind of going deep and everything else will take care of itself. And it's true. The more I've come back into this way of being, I realized that all my problems were mental. Uh, <laughs> mental, that sounds a bit bad, but whatever. Uh, like, like all of my problems were happening in my thoughts, right? Sure, you can justify the problems, right? Like I could say like, look, I need to sort out this career problem and this financial problem and this as the thoughts go. But just letting that all go and just kind of coming back into stillness and back into myself at a deeper and deeper level, it just takes care of itself. Right, but you have to be willing to let go. What happened again was I just let go of everything. I let go of, you know, trying to control having a relationship. If that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Career, finances, money, I'll follow what feels right. If it happens, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And then again, then you then you mix that in with intuition, right? You, this is the thing. Surrender doesn't mean that you. Uh, say i mean it's quite the opposite you're not saying no to life you're just not trying to force anything to happen and then you surrender to what life is bringing towards you and if i find myself in a challenging situation then i just surrender into the experience of that so that's the great message here that's the reminder is you don't need to control things you can let go and you can and surrender works out better than your mind can plan for, right? And it's beautiful, right? It's it's an adventure. It's an experiment, right? It's a, don't do this because you should do it. Don't be like, I should meditate. I should do this. I should do that. I mean, you should meditate. But <laughs> it's living this way is like, I'm, if, if I can get out of my thoughts enough and then I'm, I meditate and then it's, it's all good. You don't need to like completely obliterate thoughts but just not being caught up in thoughts then it's like i have no fucking clue what's going to happen tomorrow i have and, and then tomorrow happens and then you meet this person it, it doesn't happen how you think it's going to happen right it might be a very quiet day and nothing happens but it's, it's like this this kind of sense of not knowing not needing to control is this curious adventure it's a funny balance though because it's not like you just sit on your ass and wait for things to happen. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you go out there and things happen, right? It's all, the, the easiest way I can say it is you, you just trust your intuition, right? And you, sometimes you struggle with yourself, but it does work out. That's, I guess that's, that's the key there. So there's no right or wrong, right? But, but like the one last thing I wanted to say is like wholesomeness and giving and serving is what I would, uh, say is key right things work out things don't work out when you want to create things for the self when you know it's funny but it is a balance right because there's some people that talk very much around how um put yourself first come back into yourself self-love it's true but wanting to serve something beyond yourself is for me when I try to isolate myself too much, I just feel depressed, alone, right? Being willing to serve, but then being also content with being on my own. Like that's the key balance, right? It's quite, it's quite a nuanced balance where it's like, I'm quite happy to just sit and meditate and be in stillness. But then when the inevitable engagement with others happens, engaging into that, right? So it's this balance, right? Put yourself first, sort of. But I've also noticed if, if I make my greatest intention, my priority to, uh, you know, offer myself up to whatever life presents with me, presents to me, things just feel better. I mean, there's a couple of places I've heard this from others saying some of the thing that has really resonated with me. I mean, I've once heard Angelo say on fuck knows where on like one of his retreats or something that whenever there was a period in his life where he was feeling particularly dysphoric and, struggling if he just made his priority wanting to help others things started to flow again and i've noticed that myself 
And sometimes the best thing that you can do to help others is to just sit and meditate, right? This was also a beautiful thing that I once heard from Angelo was uh, one of his retreats again. Um, every time you sit and meditate, it's making a difference in the world. And I truly believe that because you're dissolving your own resistances, your own reactivities, which is going to play out around others in any case. And then the last thing I wanted to say about this was I was watching one of Frank Yang's video recently and he was talking about karma and cause and effect. And he was like, every time that you you have this this choice to open or close, um, well, he didn't quite say it like that, but this is my own stuff added onto it. But basically it was like karma dissolves if you're not acting out of a selfishness, out of a greed, out of a, um, if you're acting out of a wholesomeness, right? What's the most wholesome thing that you can do here? That's the best way to put it. And Matt Garrett has said this to me before, ages ago when we spoke. Uh, the path comes down to, are you willing to open up or are you going to close and contract? And these these kind of things all blend into the same message for me. And I've noticed this in my life as well. In the periods where I've tried to contract and make things about me, it's not worked out for me. And then that breaks down. Life humbles me brings me to my knees, brings me to surrender. And it needed to, because that was some ego pattern that needed to get worked out of the system, some karma conditioning that needed to dissolve. And then it's like, okay, I'm willing, I'm willing to serve. I'm willing to let go of all my preferences. I don't care where my life goes. I'm willing. And then, you know, life does work out quite nicely. It just doesn't mean you have to go and live on the street under a cardboard box, right? Maybe you're willing to do that, but <laughs> you can still have perks and things, but it's, it's, it's not out of a place of like, I need to create this life for myself. It's like, I'm willing to go where life takes me. And then, and then I don't know where it's going. I could make a video in, <laughs> in two months time saying I'm now living on the street under a cardboard box because of the way I chose to live my life. But that's part of the mystery, right? That's the key thing is you're like, where the fuck is this going? Let's see. As opposed to, I need a plan two years in advance to avoid living the life I don't want to live. So those are the choices you have. And to go back to where I started this video, this book had a big impact on me. All right, have a nice day, everybody.